Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice rational equation. We have x to the fourth plus one divided by x cubed plus x equals seven over two, and we're going to be solving for x values, real and complex, all of them. Okay, now when you get an equation like this, what is the most typical response? Cross multiplication. So let's start with that. Let's call that first method. So let's multiply. We're going to get 2x to the fourth plus 2 equals 7x cubed plus 7x. Great. Now, we can go ahead and put everything on the same side. This is a quartic equation, fourth degree. The numbers, the coefficients kind of remind me of some type of symmetry, right? I mean, there seems to be some type of symmetry. And... I'm hoping that this is going to be factorable because of the numbers. So I try to pair up these two and those two because of the numbers again. And let's see how we can factor these two. Factor the two out. x to the fourth plus one. And then minus 7x, x to the second plus one. Hmm. Do you think x to the fourth plus one contains x squared plus one? Like difference of two squares, but this is sum of two squares? Unfortunately, no. x to the fourth plus one cannot be factored over the reals. It can be factored over the complex numbers because you can basically write this as x squared plus i multiplied by x squared minus i, right? And of course, those can be factored as well. But the problem with that is none of these match the x squared plus 1, so we're not going to be able to, you know, use it. Well, x squared plus 1 can also be factored similarly, like x plus i, x minus i. Speaking of complex numbers, by the way, don't forget to check out the my new channel, a plus bi. Anyways, go ahead and check it out if you like complex numbers. Now, this, this is not going to help us. So what should we do? Another option would be, another option would be to solve this equation, which is a quartic, right? So how do you solve quartic equations? Well, there's something called the quartic formula. You can basically replace x with something like y plus 7 over 4. Uh-oh, it's not going to be nice at all. It's going to be very unpleasant. But if you do it, you're going to get rid of the cubic term. That's going to be a depressed quartic. And then you can solve it by factoring it or by Descartes methods, I think. There's two methods about it. And then you're going to end up with a cubic equation, which you can solve uh, using the cubic formula, or you can just, again, break it down. Okay, so that's super duper painful. You don't want to do that, obviously, right? Do you? So let's go ahead and use a smarter approach. And that's called the second method. Usually, the second method is smarter. You, you, you probably noticed, right, in most of my videos. So the first method is super painful, and then we get to enjoy the easier one, the more elegant one. So we have this divided by that equals 7 over 2, correct? Let's double check. Yep. Now, we got some symmetry, but it didn't help. But that should tell you something. This is actually a symmetric equation. So yes, you could do something about it but not like that. You kind of have to do something. Well, let me do this first, and then maybe I'll go back to the first and then show you how that works out as well. So I'm going to do the following. I would like to divide the top and the bottom by x squared. Now you might be asking like, why do we do that? Right? Because this is a symmetric equation, that's why. But notice that when you divide by x squared, something super duper nice is going to happen. You can go ahead and separate these. This becomes x squared plus 1 over x squared. And this becomes x plus 1 over x. And guess what? They are related. Awesome. Now we got ourselves something to work with. Now we can go ahead and call this something. Now obviously I'm going to use substitution a lot because it's awesome and it's very helpful. That's probably why it's awesome, right? So let's go ahead and call this t. So what can I get from t, I can square both sides, and that's going to give me x squared plus 1 over x squared, that's how I usually do it, plus 2 equals t squared, 
And since I need this, let's go ahead and subtract two from both sides. That's the power of substitution. And we use this a lot with polynomials and rational expressions like this. And you could also use this for sum of two cubes, so on and so forth. But anyways, that's a different story. So now I can go ahead and replace the top with t squared minus 2. So this becomes t squared minus 2. And guess what? I ended up getting a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and write it down. t squared minus 2 divided by t equals 7 halves. You see how things simplify when you do the right substitution. But of course, you had to manipulate it first. You can't do this right away. You can. I'll show you in a little bit after this. So now let's cross multiply. You know the usual stuff. And then, oops, that's supposed to be a 4, not a 2. Equals 7t. 2t squared minus 7t minus 4 equals 0. And now we can go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Quadratic equations are so easy to solve. So easy to solve, don't you think, compared to cubics and cortex. Negative b plus minus, and some people complain about the quadratic formula. Come on, there's other things to complain about. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be 4 times 2 times 4. That's going to be 32, I think. Their sum is going to be 81, and guess what? Yeah, we're going to get a nice, uh, I think, rational result from here. 49 plus 32 is equal to 81. The square root of 81 is 9. And from here, if we split it up, one of the solutions, 16 divided by 4, and the other one is going to be negative 2 divided by 4, and that's going to be negative 1 half. So we got two t values, 2t or not 2t. <laughs> so let's go ahead and back substitute. What is t? t is x plus 1 over x. Awesome. t is x plus 1 over x. And I got t equals 4, so let's go ahead and set this equal to 4 first. From here, we can multiply everything by x. And then that should give us a really nice quadratic equation. Again, you can solve this with a quadratic formula, but come on, if you know Poisson and Lowe's method, which is something that I made a video on, I believe, you're going to get 2 plus minus root 3. Easy to find. So those are the real solutions, real deal. And then the other t value is going to give us negative 1 half. Again, if you multiply everything by, instead of multiplying by x, you could multiply by 2x. So that's going to give you 2x squared plus 2 equals negative 1, and then 2x squared, that should be an x somewhere, negative x. Okay, here we go, because we multiply by 2x, uh, negative x, and then that's going to give us 2x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, now, how do you solve this equation by using the quadratic formula again? Let's go ahead and solve it, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1, Minus 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16. Uh-oh, that's not good. That's not good. This is going to give us complex solutions because the discriminant is negative, right? 1 minus 16 is negative. So we're going to write it as, that's not a problem at all, right? Square root of 15i divided by 4. Okay, that's pretty much it. But let me go back and show you real quick how we could also do this within the first method uh, because that's also... Uh, somewhat straightforward. Okay, so here's what you could do from this point on. You could go ahead and divide everything by x squared. It's going to give you 2x squared minus 7x minus 7 over x plus 2 over x squared. And then put these two together and put these two together, factor out the 2s and the 7s, and then just substitute and solve. And that's pretty much it. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Uh, by the way, let me just co copy the uh, other solutions here. So I want to put these together. Okay, we could probably write this here. 2 plus minus root 3 again. And this would be all the solutions. Okay? Maybe these. Okay. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.